This one actually is for the little children, and so Cappy's going to keep it very clean. And it, this is kind of one in futility because ultimately it's up to the parents, specifically the fathers, to keep track of what teachers are teaching your children because teachers are going to, well, they're not going to teach. Let's just put it that way. Teachers are going to be indoctrinating your children in lies and Marxism and communism. This is why they push sharing show, so much. And if you're a little, if you remember when you were five years old <clears throat> in kindergarten, boy, they really push that sharing. You're like, well, this is mine. <laughs> and they immediately eliminate the concept of, of property or individuality or ownership because they want to push a, a Marxist agenda. And any little kids listening, I know these are big words, but um, I'm talking to your parents now. And it's up to the parents, specifically the father, to take a vested interest in the education of your children and see whether your teachers are teaching kids things that are going to help them get a job, become adults, be successful, or if they're just indoctrinating them in lies and deceits and, and socialism. Which, again, big word for the little kids, but don't worry. You shouldn't have to worry about this when you're a little kid. The problem is, as I know most parents, especially when I did the research for this book, I found that most of you parents, you, you really don't want to be parents. You just want to have kids. I'm sorry, kids. That's another thing. Your parents really don't love you that much. They just wanted to have you. But yeah, You might as well learn that now until it's too late. <clears throat> um, and, and so you guys and gals don't really care the quality of the education what your kids are, are receiving. And you don't care what the teachers are teaching them. As long as the kids, as long as those teachers take your kids off your hands and you don't have to raise them. That's basically what's it. So this is <clears throat> so since parents are going to be completely worthless and 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 pointless and not helpful at all in this endeavor, I have to speak to the kids directly. Kids, there is a video out there of a man interviewing a, a journalist, interviewing a teacher, uh, two young ladies. I know to you they seem older because they're your teachers, but they're two teachers. <clears throat> and the one teacher says, well, I'm a, soci a social science teacher, and I don't really teach my kids social sciences from the book. I teach them about justice. Now, the problem with that, kids, is I, you're going to school, and I know going to school sucks. It's boring. It's not fun. Uh, but it is necessary because the real world, when you get older, is not going to be exciting or fun. It's hard work. Your parents go to work every day. Uh, you wonder where they go. They go to a very boring place, just like school, except it's even more boring. But in exchange for their time that they go to this boring place, they get money. That's how they pay for your food. That's how they pay for your, your clothes and your toys and the house you guys live in or the apartment you live in. And they're preparing you for that. And there's no option. This, is, this isn't like, well, can we just not work? No, it doesn't work that way. You all have to work because those toys you like, the food you like, the ice cream you like, the cars you drive in, the bus you drive in, uh, your, your tablets, people have to make that stuff. That's why they go to work. The people aren't going to work just throwing balls in the air. They're making your tablets. They're making the plastic that goes into it. They're making your bicycles. They're making the food you eat. Because if everybody sat around doing nothing, Nothing would get produced, and then we'd all starve to death, and we wouldn't have homes to live in. And that's that's just basic economics again when you get to high school, you study that, or maybe you're studying that now. Uh, so this lady is uh, who's talking about, well, I don't teach my children social sciences or civics. That's what they called it in our day, how the government and the economy works. I teach them about justice. And what you're being fed by this particular teacher and likely some others is how you're oppressed and how you're racist or you're discriminatory, how you have privilege, how the color of your skin is so important, how, how your, your gender, if you're talking about it at that age, whether you're a boy or a girl or not, <clears throat> is very important. Uh, they probably are also talking about how you have to share. They're probably also talking about how companies are evil and rich people are evil and people who have more didn't earn it and all this other stuff. Now, I need, I don't know how old you are and if you're tuning in, uh, but you need to ask yourself a question. Does your skin color or your race or your gender, whether you're a boy or a girl or whether you're a girl and you like boys and whether you're a boy, you like boys or girl, you like girls, girls, you like boys. What does that have to do? with helping you make money. <clears throat> what does it help to do that when you get out of school and you graduate from high school or you graduate from college, how does any of that 
help you produce the stuff and the things that other people like to consume. It doesn't, and that's the whole point. <clears throat> you are being lied to by your teachers. Not all the time. Like when you go to math class, that's real. When you go to, I'm trying to think, maybe they have a, a computer class. You're learning about computers. That's real. When you go to <clears throat> science class, you learn about the earth and the sun and the, the uh solar system and, and rocks and, and oil and biology and all that, that's all real. But when you get into history and when you get into civics, or you could be in a class and they start talking about things that have nothing to do with whether that's going to help you develop a skill where you can repair your own bike, or you can drive your own car, or you could drive a truck, or you could fly a plane, or maybe you become a soldier, or maybe you become an accountant, which is incredibly boring. You probably don't want to do that. They're wasting your time, and what they're doing is they're, it's called indoctrinating, but in, sense, in essence, they're lying to you. Now, I don't have all the time in the world, nor do I think is it right moment at this time to explain to you why your teachers are lying to you, but they have uh, other reasons that they're lying to you that are not good. They're trying to get you to think a certain way. They're going to inevitably try to get you to vote a certain way. I don't know if they brought in Democrats or Republicans yet or politics. They probably have, depending on how old you are. And you really need to ask yourself a question. Why are they universally, all of them, are going to advocate or, or uh, recommend you think a certain way or you vote a certain way? And it's never the other way. It's never the Republicans. It's always the Democrats. Corporations are never good. They're always evil. Rich people are always bad. They're never good. White people always have privilege, including you, who you might be eight years old, nine years old, 10 years old. Here. And you're like, what? <laughs> you're like, huh? You know, I just want to play with the frog. Uh, that's because your teachers are lying to you. Your teachers are not good people. Most now, there's some good teachers, but they are not most teachers. Most teachers are lying to you. Maybe not all the time. But if they go outside of, if your math teacher starts talking about politics or things that haven't, doesn't have to do with math, they're likely lying to you. If your social science teacher or your civics or social uh, teacher, what is it? So, not social science, social civics, social, social studies. If they start talking about how this group of people are bad, this group of people are evil, this people have privilege, those people don't have, these people are oppressed. This gender, boys versus girls, all that, they're lying to you. And what they're trying to do is down the road, in a very, very long, when you get old, you will think a certain way. And essentially, as it pertains to teachers, vote to give them more money. Because teachers, just they don't get paid like you don't pay them. Your parents actually technically don't pay them. They're paid by the government. And so the government has to go to the people through voting, and people will vote. Your parents will vote and say, do we want to give the schools, and thus the teachers, more money. And teachers always want more money. <clears throat> the way they can ensure that happens is by making sure that when you graduate from high school at the age of 18, you vote to give them more money. And that's what it is. So they are not only lying to you, they are wasting your time. They're not educating you. They're not preparing. Do you guys want to be rich? You want to make a lot of money and buy that bike or buy that fancy car? <clears throat> do you want to go to the baseball game all the time? Do you want to sit in the really cool seats where you're going to have to work hard? You got to learn some good skills and traits. You got to learn math. You got to get straight A's. You got to go into the right field. You do not want to go become a, all your teachers going to tell you, you want to become a teacher. You don't want to become a teacher. They don't make a lot of money because everybody goes and becomes a teacher. They're not that unique. They're not that special. And on top of it, they're not that smart. They're pretty dumb, actually. And when you get older, you're going to realize that. When you look back, you say, my teachers were dumb. My teachers were evil. My, pe my teachers were, were lying to me. And that's more. Again, there's some good teachers. All right. Do what your teachers say. I'm not saying disobey. You, you, go, you respect your teachers. You shut up. You do what they say. But you as an individual, and unfortunately, a very young age, you have to realize that most of your teachers are lying to you. Most of them are pretty dumb. They don't know what they're talking about. And most of them have uh, an ulterior motive. Ulterior is a big word. Most of them are lying to you because they want to make money. That's a simpler way to put it, right? And so you got to realize that they are wasting your time. How many of you are bored in school? You're bored in school, not because the subjects aren't interesting. 
Oh, history is very interesting. Math can be very interesting. Astronomy and science can be very interesting. But are they making it boring? And you might think you're dumb. You got might get C's and D's. You might think you're an idiot because you're a bad student. That doesn't mean you're not smart. Usually, again, talk to any old adult like old Cappy here. You find out that your teachers are very bad at teaching. They can't take interesting subjects like science or history or uh, even, even politics. When you get older, you study politics and economics. They cannot make an interest because th here's a, there's a saying. Here's a saying. You can look this up on Google. Those who can't do teach. And there's a fair amount of truth to that. Teachers are kind of like the rejected adults of the, of the real world. Like they couldn't actually be an engineer. They couldn't be an accountant. They couldn't be in a soldier. They couldn't be a doctor. And what they do is because all the real adults are too busy making real money. And, you know, when you go into the doctor, how many of you have been to the doctor? You broke your arm. That takes some skill. You can't just have some somebody off the street fix your arm. You need a professional. So doctors go to school for eight years after high school to learn how to fix your arm. All right. Your teachers were too. ask your They went and studied education. That's not a real study. That's just more boring stuff that you're studying. And so you don't have terribly smart people teaching you. And if you don't do exactly what they say and you're in class and you're falling asleep because they're so boring because they've never worked in the real world, all right, it's kind of understandable you get C's and D's. If you get a really good teacher, you'll be very excited about the topic. You'll love history. You'll love studying math or whatever it is that the, any a good teacher can make any subject very interesting to you. <clears throat> Now, you also have to put it in the work. But if you're interested and the teacher is good and the teacher makes it interesting, you could get an A in any subject. You have to put in the work, though, too. But if you're falling asleep, that's a, it's not your fault. I'm going to put it right here. Teacher's going to hate this, by the way. Teacher's going to say, don't listen to that man. He's a bad, bad man. Well, I don't have to work anymore at 40. Okay? Just want to point that out. Just, you know, your teacher's still, and they're still begging for more money. <clears throat> um. Oh, where I was going with this. Uh, but just, oh, if you fall asleep, it means your teacher is failing. Your teacher is not doing a good job. It's not your fault. Your teacher is doing a bad job at teaching. Okay? So my, my little bit of advice for the kids who are out there, listen, you cannot trust your teachers, all right? You are too young, and you should not be bothered with things like race or politics or whether you're a boy or a girl, or what your gender is, or this thing called sexuality, you should be being taught reading, writing, arithmetic. I'd say programming and personal financial management as well, but you'll get there. When you get older, make sure you go to school for the right thing. You can't just pick any degree. Your teacher's also going to lie to you about your future, saying you can do anything you want. No, you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. You know, I can't be a basketball player. I'm too short. You can't be a pro wrestler if you're too small. Uh, they're going to say, follow your heart and the money will follow. Do what you're passionate about. Even your guidance counselor doesn't know anything. Your guidance counselor is just a teacher. That is also a person who, who could not do, and therefore they could only teach. And what you need to do is you need to talk to your parents, say, mom, dad, my teacher said this. Is this true? You know, if it's an opinion, it's not a fact. You got to learn the difference between opinion and fact. And go talk to your parents. Say, you know, show your parents. Everything your teacher gives you, you should go home with your parents and go over it and look over it. Is this true, Dad? <clears throat> Is this true, Mom? And your parents won't be there. They'll be like, I'm too busy. Uh, Google it. And our day was look it up in the dictionary. But, you know, different times. Uh, and then when you get older, you'll start to realize that your teachers were lying to you. Your teachers did not have your best interests at heart. And your teachers were there just to make money. They're just there to get a job. They don't, most teachers don't really care about you. So there you go. Um, and, and, you know, middle schoolers, I think you're about old enough. You're the age where you start to distrust your teachers. Maybe you can help the young ones out. Google this stuff. YouTube it. Research it. Your teachers are not that smart. They're pretty stupid. All right? And if you look at, at IQ, Major by IQ or, or uh, childhood education is usually one of the lowest ranked ones, sometimes often the very bottom or within the bottom three or four. Okay. Your teachers are not smart. Your teachers are also lying to you. And you young kids, 
especially if your parents are participating in your education. Unfortunately, you're going to have to grow up very early, very quickly, and start learning this stuff on your own. So I'm going to rely on the high school kids, but unfortunately, they're a little bit too indoctrinated. Yeah, I'm going to go save the world and change lives, become a teacher too. You high school kids, yeah, okay, whatever. It's the middle school kids. You start noticing like, hey, this is a lot like prison. School's a lot like prison. And it, it is. It is a lot like prison. And there's a reason for that. I'm trying to tell you why. So maybe you middle schoolers, before you get too thoroughly indoctrinated and brainwashed by your teachers, but then you go into high school, maybe you can help out the younger brothers and sisters you have still in grade school. And you can, you can expose these teachers for what they are. Okay? All right. <clears throat> uh, Eleanor Rigby. Resident lady of the Cappy Sphere. Uh, $10 as a high school teacher. Oh, she admits it. As a teacher myself. Let me tell you something. All my coworkers who plastered I miss my students all over Facebook just voted this week to remain virtual for fall semester. Right. All right. Okay, guys and, and gals, ladies, boys. Uh, Eleanor Rigby is a teacher. That's not a real name. But she's a high school teacher. And she all, you can see this on Facebook. You can see it on social media where all the teachers say, I love my children. I love my students. They just vote. When it comes down to it, they just voted to remain virtual for all fall semester. They don't like you kids. Most teachers, not all, most teachers just want to make money off of you. And they also want to brainwash you so that you believe in their, it's kind of like a religion. You know, you might be Muslim, you might be Christian, you might be Jewish. There's another religion called socialism, communism, or environmentalism. That's another one where they talk about how important it is to recycle and all that. <clears throat> That's a religion too. They want you to believe in their religion, but they don't want, they don't care if you're if, if it's better for you or if it's good for you. All right, there you kids go. <clears throat> Best of luck. Hope you kids are true independent thinkers. And hey, if you got kids or you guys are kids yourself or you are parents or you're teachers and you're sick and tired of other teachers lying to your kids, share this. I didn't curse once. I kept it really nice and polite. See you kids later. Toodles.